Today's video is sponsored by EK Offers. Are you one of those guys who's regularly looking for an affordable and legit copy of Windows 10 Pro? So look no further. EK Offers is selling a very cheap, genuine Windows 10 Pro for $17. But with the coupon code XTNC20, you will able to get the legit Windows 10 Pro for $13. Yes guys, you heard me. $13 for a legit copy of Windows 10 Pro. That's 20% off. So click the link in the video description below. So thank you EK Offers for sponsoring this video. What's up guys, this is Action and today we're going to build a RGB gaming PC featuring ASUS all new motherboard, the ROG Strix X570-E Gaming. So this motherboard has the latest X570 chipset for the third generation Ryzen processors. And we'll get into a closer look at it later on. For now, let's get into building this RGB gaming PC step by step. So first up, let's lay down the tools we need. A multi-bit screwdriver with magnetic tip will be your best friend throughout this build. There will be a rare instances that we might need anything else, so just in case, keep a pair of cutter and cable ties within reach. Now let's get to the actual build. I personally prefer to disassemble the case first to get things out of the way. We're going to use the ROG Strix Helios, which is going to be the perfect case for this RGB build. It is a medium-sized tower that sports the ROG aesthetic. What I like about this case is that it has a handling straps making it easy to lift. It also features a three tempered glass panels with a push to release button in the sides giving us a toolless access inside as well as integrated RGB lighting in the front. So first, we will install the motherboard's IO shield if it's not already pre-installed in the motherboard. Since this motherboard already has a pre-installed IO, we can already skip this step. Next, we're going to install the CPU to the motherboard. With the dawn of the Ryzen's third generation of processors, we're all excited to see what AMD has in store for us. But as of the moment, we're still waiting for the third generation of Ryzen processors, so we will be using the Ryzen 2700X for now. This 8-core 16-thread processor has a lot of potential and it is one of the popular processors for gamers and content creators alike. This will be paired with the all new ROG Strix X570-E Gaming. So this motherboard sports a new RGB ID design where the lighting effect pattern flows downward giving it a rain-like RGB effect. It also has two RGB Gen 2 headers which can utilize up to 240 pieces LED, twice the number of supported LEDs in RGB Gen 1. RGB Gen 2 allows for an improved LED response rate and motherboard can automatically detect the number of LEDs connected so it can perform a better Aura RGB effect. The ROG Strix X570-E Gaming also has improved networking capabilities, a Wi-Fi 6 module which allows for a faster Wi-Fi connection up to 10 gigabits per second, double the bandwidth compared to a Wi-Fi 5 as well as a dual Ethernet connection on the back, giving you the option having a 2.5 gigabits Ethernet and 1 gigabit Ethernet connection. We can also push some extra mileage out of the Ryzen 7 2700X 
with this smaller board because of its overclocking capabilities. The VRM are equipped with the large heat sinks that has an 8mm copper heat pipe for better thermal headroom. Before install the CPU to the motherboard, let us take the motherboard out of the anti-static back first, then place it on top of its backs. To install the processor to the motherboard, hold it up and look for the corner with a gold triangle within the processor. Don't touch the golden side of the processor. Lift up the retention arm. Carefully align the corner with the triangle in the motherboard socket and drop the processor to the socket without using any force. Slightly wiggle it to make sure it's properly seated. The processor should just snugly fit in. Then you can bring down the retention arm to lock it in place. Next, we're going to install the RAM. Before installing the RAM, you'll see that there's an indicator right here on which to occupy first. In this motherboard, we are using the DIMM B2 and the DIMM A2. For this, we have a nice kit of Kleb Crash X RGB DDR4 gaming memory that has a beautiful RGB illumination. To install this, we must pull down the tabs on the memory slot and align the DIMMs to the notch inside the slots. And push them down until the tabs lock into place. You might need a little bit force on this one, but don't overdo it. Next, we are going to install the M.2 SSD. Before we have access to the M.2 slot, we need to remove the chipset cover first. Here, you will see that the X570-E Gaming has two M.2 slots which you can both use but for now, we will be using the one at the bottom. Make sure that the M.2 screws and standoffs are within reach. We can now remove the heatsink and place the SSD. For this installation, we will be using the Seagate Barracuda 510 SSD 256GB. So, screw in the standoff to the M.2 and angle the SSD in place. Once done, peel off the thermal pad from the heatsink. Place it back and screw it in. Next, uh, for the CPU cooler installation, we are going to use the ROG Strix LC240 all-in-one liquid cooler. As for this case, we are going to use the AM4 specific mounting. Let us first take the pre-installed heatsink mount by removing the four screws. Since the ROG Strix X570-E Gaming already has a pre-installed backplate, we can now proceed putting the AM4 standoff screws. So now we are going to install the motherboard to the case. So make sure you have screwed in your motherboard standoffs inside the case if they're not yet already installed. So align your motherboard holes into the standoffs and screw the motherboard in securely following a crisscross pattern. Do not over tighten the screws. Then if you have a fully modular power supply, to lessen hassle, plug the CPU EPS power connector beforehand. Normally, you can route this on the upper left corner of the motherboard tray. Now, we can install the RGB fans, one for the rear and two for the radiator. I will be using the Cooler Vortex RGB SPB120. We'll always orient the cable fan towards the motherboard. Cable fans should pass through this cut off, making cable management easier later on. So once the fans are secured with four screws, we can now install the radiator to the top mount of the case. From here, you can now remove the protective plastic. The ROG Strix LC240 already has a pre-applied thermal compound. So mount the pump by aligning it with the previously installed standoff screws and securing it with the four thumb screws. After that, connect the AIO cooler connector, the 4-pin header CPU fan, or AIO pump connector on your motherboard. 
then connect the micro USB cable to the AEO pump, micro USB port, then connect the other end to a 9 pin USB 2 connector on your motherboard. So next step is plug in the front panel connectors into the motherboard. Always consult your manual for this if you're not sure where this goes depending on your motherboard. These connections go to your power button, reset button, hard drive indicator LED, your USB connections, and high definition audio connection. Next step, we're going to install the power supply unit. Installing the power supply is pretty straightforward. Plug in all the connections that you will need in the ROG Tor power supply. Then just screw in the power supply to its respective compartment. Then connect the main power connector, a 24 pin, 8 pin CPU EPS uh, to the motherboard. And later on, we're going to connect the uh, 6 plus 2 pin times 2 uh, for the GPU. So for the next step, uh, we will be mounting the SSD and the hard drive. So I'll be using the Seagate 5 CUDA 1 terabyte and put them in their uh, respective drive base and plug in the SATA power and the SATA data connection. Now it's time to install the RGB fans. So the Rogue Strix Helios already came with the fans pre-installed and all that is left is to connect the RGB and fan headers to the motherboard as well as the LED strips. Next step, we're going to install the GPU. We're going to use the top of the line Rogue Strix RTX 2080. That will give us all the GPU power that we need to run our games. It has a three areas of RGB illumination on the front, as well as the Asus ROG logo on the backplate and small ROG on the side. Installing the GPU is also a straightforward process. Remove the two screws in the PCIe brackets from the case and slide in your GPU. Make sure you align the notch to the PCIe x16 slot on the motherboard. Use the same screws to secure the GPU, then plug the VGA 6 plus 2 times 2 pin connector from the power supply. Now before we manage the cables and close the case, we need to see if the PC boots. This will save us a hassle just in case we need to troubleshoot. Here you can see that the Strix Helios has a plenty of room for our cable management. It's a good thing that it already has a Belco straps but still, you can use the cable ties for a more tidy look. Now let's install the windows by using our bootable Windows 10 installer. So we will have to go to the BIOS menu to select the USB drive as our bootable drive and installing the windows will be pretty straightforward. There you go guys, hope this video has been helpful to you. If you follow these steps on building your own gaming PC and you've been successful, congratulations and if you're having some trouble, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best answering your questions. And lastly, I just want you to know that this one is the hardest vid I've done so far so I would appreciate if you give this a thumbs up, alright? And I want to give a big shout out to Asus ROG for providing all the components and to Ira James of ggwptech.com. So there you have it. Thank you guys for tuning in. This has been Action. So like the video, subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you on my next PC build guide.